also clothed you in, with embroidered cloth and put sandals of porcelain on your feet. I wrapped your skin with fine linen and covered you with silk. I adorned you with ornaments, put bracelets on your hands and a necklace around your neck. And I also put a ring through your nostril, <coughs> and earrings on your ear, and a beautiful crown on your head. Thus you were adorned with gold and silver, and your dress was fine linen, silk, and embroidered cloth. You ate the fine flour, the honey, and the oil, so that you were exceedingly beautiful and advanced in royalty. Then your fame went forth among the nations and on your account of your beauty. For it was perfect because of my splendor, which I had bestowed upon you, declares the Lord. But you trusted in your beauty and played the harlot with those around you for fame. You poured out your harlotries over every passerby who might be willing. You took some of your clothes, which I made for you in various places, and you took them and ripped them to shreds. You took your beautiful jewels and made uh, made of my gold and my silver, which I had given you, and made for yourself images that you might also play the harlot with them. And he goes on and on and on about all that Israel does. And in verse 60, he says, Nevertheless, no, I gotta read this. I love this. Verse 48 As I live, declares the Lord, your sister Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah, and her daughter, Gomorrah, had not done the things that your daughters have done. Behold, the guilt of your sister Sodom, that she was in her arrogance, abundant food, careless of babies. She did not help the poor and the needy. Thus were haunting and committed abominations before me. Therefore, I removed myself from my saw it. Furthermore, Samaria. He goes on to say how these people, who we think are detestable in the Old Testament, are nothing compared to what Israel has done. Yet in verse 60, this is what he says. Nevertheless, I will remember my covenant with you in the days of your youth, and I will establish an everlasting covenant with you. There will be remembered for your way, you will be remembered for your ways, and be ashamed for you receive your sisters. But your older and your younger, I will give them to you as daughters, but not because of your covenant. Thus I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Are you kidding me? That somebody, that some people group would do all of this stuff, be so, and still God would say, nevertheless, I will offer to you an everlasting covenant, regardless if you play the harlot and open your, to everybody else in the world, through the things that I have given you, I will offer you an everlasting covenant. Are you kidding me? I believe that God delivers today because God has delivered me today. He delivers me when I change my thought process, my thoughts go bad, I think about people as objects, and not people, and He changes that. He allows me to change that. And I think that we have some grasp on what it means to repent. But how do we repent? What is it that we have to do? There are two ways that I'm going to suggest to you. And uh, so, mental note them. The first one is you are to change your mind by renewing your mind. There's a reason why I have Romans 12 2 tattooed on my left arm. And it's for this very reason. Listen to what Romans 12.2 says. Paul, in his understanding of this very idea, says this. He says, And be not conformed any longer to the patterns of this world. Quit thinking like what the rest of the world does, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In the light of God's way of doing things, think differently. And then you will be able to attest and approve of what God's will really is, what God wants for you, what God tells you to do in the Bible, His good, pleasing and perfect will. The second thing you can do, oh, no, I'm uh, uh, sorry, great illustration, great illustration. Hey, you remember this? I met a guy this week who has a story that he put on a bookmark and he gave to me. And it so clearly demonstrates this very point of changing and renewing your mind. Listen to this short story real fast. It's entitled, Run, Bobby, Run. Seems like that's all I've ever heard and did most of my life. In Evansville, Indiana, as a young boy living in Sweetser housing, that's where the poor live, uh, you had to run.
run or fight. In the early 60s, I learned to do both very well. By the fourth grade, I won my first 100-yard dash track meet and went on to uh, set city meet records in West Lafayette, Indiana, run Bobby Run. And as a young man at the age of 20, while I was walking down Riverside Drive, not far from where I spent most of my childhood days of running, I began to hear the voice of God's Holy Spirit talk to me, and I yelled, leave me alone. But not many years after, uh, later, after my running, God almost cost, or for running from God, God, all, excuse me, and not that many years after me running from God, it almost cost me 68 years in a state prison. It seemed that life was over, and indeed it was. Although I was not saved from prison, I was saved through it. God had seven years of my life to renew my mind with his word. And I've learned through the years of place that we almost go and die to oneself for the cross in order that God can live in us and through us. I'm not saying that you should do something bad and be sent to prison. I'm saying, in light of your immediate circumstances, find yourself in God's Word. I don't care if you've gone to church all of your life. I don't care if you've read the Bible 30 times front to back. Read your Word. Guys, I don't care if it's not the cool thing to do. Or if that's not the main thing to do, to pick up your Bible after a hard day's work and read it. But that's what you need to do as a process to change and renew your mind. If reading the Bible is what you think your wife does, start doing it with her. Thought. The second thing we can do is start producing fruit by our faith. Start producing fruit by our faith. Because if you haven't made the connection already, like I said, producing fruit is demonstrating repentance. <laughs> producing fruit is demonstrating repentance. Acting like Jesus tells us to act, living in a world where God is king, treating other people differently, giving to the poor in love, these things are demonstrating a changed mind, a changed heart. Because if you didn't have a changed mind, you didn't have a changed heart. If you weren't baptized in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you don't have that thing. You don't have that ability to renew your mind. So change your mind now. Renew your mind in God's word so you can start treating other people differently. Because living in a world where God is king means exactly that. Change your mind, Jesus says, because death can come at any moment. It does not favor the just or the unjust. It can happen, and when it does, make sure that you have repented. Because if you don't, I Change your mind now, people, please. Because one day you will die. Death has 100% success rate. It will happen. You will die. And you will meet with the creator of the universe. And he will look on your fig to see if there's any fruit. And if he does not find any, I guarantee you, he will cut you down at the root and he will throw you into the fire. Repent of your sin. Change your mind about how you think about your life. Don't just stop sinning. Change your mind about how you think about it. Why are you doing the things that you are doing? Stop doing it. Change your mind. Live in a world where God is king. Perhaps you'd like to have the opportunity to change your mind. And if you would, I offer you that opportunity now to change your mind, to be baptized, to participate in God's death, burial, and resurrection, to arise a new creation, so that you can begin renewing your mind, changing your mind about how you think about the world, and start living in a world where God is king, the kingdom of God. Or perhaps your desire is to make Old Union Christian Church your church home, the place where you allow the kingdom of God to break forth. Either way, whatever decision you may be, would you come down here and make that decision publicly as we stand and sing our song decision? Let's be standing. Let's be standing.